Michelle. Yes. <laughs> um, I had uh, a very exciting day yesterday. Really? Um, mm-hmm. I had an electrician over. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I got a text. I usually keep my phone away, but I got a text that just is from a number I don't recognize. as Henrik, we want your best novel ideas. And then a link that definitely won't steal my personal information. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen. I didn't mean to get distracted by that. But, um, but no, uh, I had an electrician come over yesterday. Mm-hmm. I mean, just to like hang out, watch Netflix, you know. Um, I like electricians. They're good people. <laughs> They're nice. It's yeah. like it's like, hey, you're a craftsman. Uh, no, um, so I I had an electrician over to do some uh, pretty basic, I would say, work around the house. Mm-hmm. Um, I have um, I had him install a brand new outlet in the backyard on the back of the house because there's no outlet in the backyard, and then I had him replace the outlet in the front of the house because it is literally original from like 1954. It looks like it. Every year when I plug my Christmas lights into it, I'm always like, wow, when they turn on. Because I'm just waiting for that plug <laughs> to be dead. Because it's so rusty and old. Um, uh, so now I have like big, and I, I, I had them give me like the big, robust uh, uh, outlets that are for like, you know, really nice outside. They have the big plastic dome over the front and everything. Yeah. Real nice. Yeah. Um, and also, there is a switch that for more than a decade does nothing light switch right next to the light switch in my kitchen it does nothing i was told that it connected to nothing like there were no cords connected to it Mm -hmm. that was a lie oh really it was connected to something but what wow the the electrician said that he he tested it and not only did it not seem to affect anything but there was current in it wow so like he said maybe it goes to an outlet that you don't know about or or maybe it goes to like an outlet you don't use anymore or maybe they rewired the outlet at some point and it just no longer goes to the four-way switch maybe it like is hidden you know like there's a uh like a light thing somewhere in like your ceiling you know, like that's been covered up by like new drywall or something. They're like, yeah, we don't need this. One. I thought you were saying maybe there's like a light in a secret room where like a. Well, scary I mean, there could be. Lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if that's the case, he's gonna have trouble sleeping in there because we wired it to just permanently be on so that that switch can be used for something else. Um, there's also a mystery switch on the door by my garage that we don't know what it does either. Uh, but it- that. Oh, sorry. I was going to say maybe garage door opener at one point. No, there's the other one. There are oh, two switches. Uh, that one goes to the garage door opener. So, but so uh, he was kind enough to rewire. So, cause we have a light in my dining room that you can't turn on or off at all. Uh, there used so to be, there used to be a fan light there. So you could just pull the clicker and it would turn on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, so we had it rewired to that light. So now I actually, the way I remedied that was I got one of those uh, LED light bulb sets that have a remote, like a remote control. And I used that to turn on and off the light, which was, you know, a pretty good $30 solution. Pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so he ran the cable to that too. And uh, now everything is more the way I would like it to be electrically. So I'm very excited. Oh, and also replacing the uh, outlet in the front gives me two outlets in the front now, which is also just nice. That's really um, nice. The only thing I don't love is the box that the outlets are on, like sticks like two inches off the wall <laughs> because they, they don't want to, you know, cut a giant square out of the brick anymore. They just do one little wire. They said that that's a much smarter way to do it. And I was like, I mean, oh, you- that makes sense. You could have just had them. You could have been like, no, I don't want to stick out. Just cut uh, out the bricks. Just, just, uh, so. Damage the house. Hurry. Hurry. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> Before it's too late. But um, so uh, the thing, though, that blew my mind, and I, I talked to you about this briefly yesterday. I was like sending you texts and stuff. <clears throat> I, I, you know, I, I was like, oh, crap. An electrician's coming over. We don't know. I mean, he's doing quite a bit of work through multiple circuits. So I like shut off all of my computers and stuff. Cause I was like, you know, they might need to like kill the power in most of the house. Mm-hmm. He didn't shut off any electricity at all. 
maybe that's just his thing. Maybe he just he I mean, likes to flirt with danger. <laughs> well, and, I mean, I have to state, of course, that I know even less about electrician stuff than I know about everything else I know very little about. So I'm not saying that he did a dangerous job. I am simply just saying that I was fascinated by the idea that he didn't have to shut <laughs> any breakers. Not, I'm not saying I'm surprised that the house had any power. I mean, he never opened the breaker box. Wow, wow. But then again, I mean, maybe you just all you, you just wear rubber, you know, you wear grounded rubber gloves or whatever, and that's it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the secret. Like, it just doesn't matter. But from my perspective, he was like, he was like cutting and opening up live wires. So, I mean, you know, but I'm not going to go, hey, pal, uh, don't do that. It might kill you. And they go, oh, I didn't even think about Forgot. that. Yeah. <laughs> Doy. He like uh. leaves your house and he's like, did I turn the breakers back on? And he's like, oh, no, I never turned them off. I never turned them off. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Uh, and then it becomes an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. But somehow, he never was electrocuted because of this doll of Santa Maria. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, do, 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 um, so oh, speaking of that, um, I watched, uh, some of the new Unsolved Mysteries show. Yeah. I did not like it. <laughs> um, maybe I'm just stupid if that's probably it i mean let's be real but uh, <laughs> i just did not think it was good that's that's what i have to say um i watched four out of six episodes and i did not like it i i don't i haven't watched it and i'm i'm still not sure if i've seen the original series or not um yeah i don't know i don't know i'm not sure um, How are you not sure if you've been haunted by the smooth, buttery voice? <laughs> You're upsetting me so much. Robert Stack. Come on, man. I don't know who that is. That's the guy <laughs> from Unsolved Mysteries. I, I like, don't know if I've seen it. And Maybe tonight you can help solve a mystery. Probably not. Um, so <laughs> what, what about it was, like, was it not, was not good enough? Um, yeah. okay. Well... I have to treat you like you are a total ignoramus because apparently you are. <laughs> or we can pretend that I know what you're talking about if you want. Like we always do. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so the original Unsolved Mysteries was an hour-long weekly show on a major network. I don't remember which one. I only watched it in reruns. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, a show where a host... For the most part of the series, it was Robert Stack, um, who had a very good haunting voice and a great screen presence, would introduce these mysteries and narrate them. And they could range from aliens, uh, but often it was like lost loves. That was a big one. They would, and they would actually like have a little placard come up and say like lost loves. And then it would be like a story about, you know, like uh, they did a lot of episodes about like people who were adopted, like during the Great Depression and stuff, mm -hmm. when, when there were no paperwork being kept you know yeah, so people are like yeah. all i remember is the man had a red truck and the woman had a pegged leg and they were very nice people and i and and she was named carol and then the best part is the reason they could make they could make hundreds of episodes of unsolved mysteries is they would show the same mysteries um maybe like 50 weeks later if it mm -hmm. hadn't been solved to try to get it to be solved and if something happened they would film an update and that's one of the right, things right. that I love the most about Unsolved Mysteries is that you would be watching this mystery and you'd be like, whoa, this is so creepy or weird or sad. And then you're, do, 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 and you're update. And then you're like, <gasps> and then you find out that like they solved the mystery and you're so excited because Aww. they solved the mystery. I cried. So Pluto TV has an Unsolved Mysteries channel. Yeah, I know. And the thing that you have to keep in mind about the company that does Unsolved Mysteries, they're still updating the episodes. Wow. So when the episodes go to a new streaming platform, they get mm -hmm. updated again. Wow. So um, I remember one episode made me cry so bad. It was about um, this family, uh, like a small family who lived in the, in the country. And it was during the Great Depression. And this man that they didn't know came to their house and literally was just like, my daughter's here. She's, you know, eight or nine years old or whatever. 
I don't know what to do with her right now. I'm, I'm, I've got to go to Nashville and get, I have a job waiting for me, but I have nowhere for her to stay while we're there. I, it, like, could you watch her until I can come back and get her? Mm-hmm. And the family was like, I don't know. But the father was like, well, we can't turn away a, a child. Like this man clearly needs our help. So they took her in and she stayed with them for maybe seven or eight months, or maybe it was a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. The family really took to her. She was a very sweet girl. They, they were all, you know, very, very happy about it. And, um, and then sure enough, he actually came back, the dad, and picked wow. her up and took her home. So the video was about the story and then about how it was like, we want to find her. Because they were talking about how like that was their sister, the three kids that lived there. That was like, that was their sister that they mm-hmm. never got to find out what happened yeah. or, you know, anything like that. And then it goes, update. And they got to meet. They got to meet as like, and they're all in like their 60s and 70s now, or at that wow. point. And okay, yeah. um, the oldest brother was like confined to a wheelchair and and was suffering from light from a mild case of dementia, but he remembered her when wow. she like walked into the room and it made me cry and cry and cry. And so they do lots of ones like that, or it'll just, a lot of times it's just like update, you know, so-and-so was found in Florida hiding under the assumed name of blah, blah, blah. They were, you know, put into whatever. And then of course, if you're watching like the most recent updates, it'll be like, you know, he was caught in, in 1992 after the broadcast of blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, also then he died in 2015 because he was like 89 fucking years old, you know, Aww. like, because they keep updating it. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the things that made the show so fun was that they would update it. They would, they would, uh, they would bring you up to date on it. What? Uh, I, I, I mean, it sounds good, but then it defeats the purpose of having an unsolved mystery. Like, I don't, That's I don't know how I feel about this. The, the final line of the opening of the show is maybe you can help solve a mystery. So, okay. Th- that's Fine. that's the whole thing is and just because a mystery has been solved does not mean it was not at one point an unsolved mystery okay they're presenting mysteries that were unsolved okay All hopefully right. well and, okay. and you know what though but by putting those updates in that's way better than just leaving the mystery like yeah no it was never solved it was never solved you're just watching a 17 year old rerun but it was never solved no no it's never never ever solved <laughs> but no so um but that was like one of the other huge highlights was getting to see like families reunited. There were lots of things with like, uh, you know, kids being put up for adoption. Uh, also in like the thirties and forties, there were some really abusive like orphanages where people would like lie to the children and say like, your mother was a, was a prostitute and a drunk and she tried to throw you in a dumpster. And then later you find out that like the woman was, uh, the parents were like pressured into giving the baby up and stuff. Like, really weird stuff but so people get to reunite with their family members or at least find out what happened to them then they'd also play you know bull crappy ufo things the other thing they were really famous for was their dramatic recreations were ridiculous sometimes hilarious sometimes truly chilling and sometimes just so idiotic that you can't i mean like because you gotta remember they're operating on a low budget too so it's like when everybody's seeing a ufo it just cuts to like a friggin uh you know like uh, out of out of a uh, focus glow stick on a string and everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh. <laughs> and you're like this was on like nbc <laughs> wow In like the 80s and the early 90s so and unsolved mysteries affected my generation uh, in that it was reran during the day all the time. Mm-hmm. So I have such vivid memories of like having a stomach ache and being home from school and watching like the original series Star Trek on Sci Fi Channel from like 10 a.m. To, to noon and then switching over to Lifetime, which would just play Unsolved Mysteries until 5 p.m. every weekday. Wow. Yeah, buddy. Um, and the other cool thing is that like, Uh, It would also show you how a lot of unsolved mysteries, it's not that impossible to figure something out, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no reason to lose hope. Like, uh, a lot of the times where it's like family finally gets reunited, they even mention they're like, this call was received the day after our broadcast. You're like, it took one broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. To find your, yeah. And it's always, and it's always like, you know, a person, uh, you know, uh, a person watching the TV thought they recognized the, the woman in the picture and it turned out to be their next door neighbor. You know, it's like, wow, yeah. You know, and sometimes there are people that don't want to be found, which is, which is fun too. Uh, Cause they would do a lot of like most wanted people and people who, mm-hmm. and they did people. The other thing is they didn't, they didn't keep it entirely sensational. Like they didn't just do like murderers and kidnappers. They would do like people who like, serial married women 
and then stole their money and ran. Like mm-hmm. they did a lot mm-hmm. of those cases of people who would like change their identity and like marry someone, make ch- charge up a bunch of credit cards, then disappear or fake their own death, you know? And they did stuff that was like legendary, like D.B. Cooper, you know, D.B. Cooper, right? Probably. What? You, how do you not know D.B. Cooper? I, I probably know. I, I just um, are not good with names. Well, it, it's not really his name. That's part of the mystery. Um, oh, okay. D.B. Cooper is this, this legendary story about a guy who robbed an airplane carrying like a i'm probably getting this all wrong but carrying i think it was like money to go to a bank Mm -hmm. he and he took the money and jumped out of the plane with a parachute oh shit right and uh there are all these crazy theories like that he was in the fbi or the cia or that he had special training but he was never found the money was never found he jumped out of the friggin' plane with millions of dollars and was never found Wow. But then, and the reason it ended up on Unsolved Mysteries is because multiple people on their deathbed have claimed to be D.B. Cooper. How crazy is that, though? It, it's not that crazy because I'm D.B. Cooper. I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew this whole thing was an act. I was like, there's no way a person is this. And no way yeah. person is Michelle. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I was trying, but I'm really not that good about lying and coming up with a new identity, so I did this. I knew it. You're actually an 81-year-old man. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so they do like a dramatic reenactment of like D.B. Cooper. And, mm-hmm. and, then they, and then they investigate like the people who said like, I, I'm D.B. Cooper on their deathbed and stuff like that. In wow. fact... Did you ever watch? You probably didn't because you were cooler than me. Did you ever watch news radio when you were younger, when it was on the air? No. There's a, it's, it's a show about a, about a news radio station. And uh, the owner is this crazy millionaire, you know, who's constantly like debating cutting the funding and stuff like that. And there's a great part where he ends up getting taken to court. <laughs> He gets taken to court. This is such a great episode. He gets taken to court and they're like, what? And, and uh, the guy who runs the radio station is like, well, what are the charges? And they're like, we believe this man is D.B. Cooper. And you're like, no one knows why this guy's so rich. So he starts like protecting him and stuff. And then when he's like pulling him out, he's like, why aren't you fighting this hard? And he's like, I might be D.B. Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> but then the best part is the way that episode ends spoiler alert it came out in 1985 um mm-hmm. the, the way it actually ends is when they're in the middle of the court and they're about to declare that he's db cooper and has to go to prison adam mm-hmm. west storms in you know the original batman but not uh-huh. not adam west like an act like him playing somebody adam west as adam west storms like in and did, proclaims yeah. that he is indeed db cooper and he has the evidence <laughs> and they arrest adam west and everyone just goes and goes Huh. So Adam West is DB Cooper. I I didn't see that coming. I, I didn't. You know, like it was a really great that show was really funny. Uh news Yay. radio. It was very, very good. Uh that was I think the first mainstream television role Joe Rogan had. He played huh. like a, a spunky uh radio engineer on it. Um huh. so anyway, DB Cooper, really good example of an unsolved mystery. To this mm-hmm. day, no one really knows what happened to D.B. Cooper. I mean, it's possible he fell into some water and drowned. Pretty much everyone thinks he died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, when the, I feel like, and I hope that you will always hold out hope if something happens to me. But I feel like if you, if you heard from everybody, like, well, the last we saw Henrik, he was jumping out of a plane. You might be thinking, like, maybe he's dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, maybe he bit it. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'd always believe you were okay. You had a plan. <laughs> but uh, so, and then, they, you know, they do stories about like, you know, people being faith healed. They do stories about, you know, people seeing like a, like a statue cry and, and, and they boo. did all, all, boo. Yeah. But they, they did all that stuff. Of course, you know what you never heard on the stories about like the, the crying Virgin Mary statue you never heard the update about how it's of like course. it turns we out that statue was out. just really sad that day yeah <laughs> we found out that the statue had read a really polarizing post on facebook uh and <laughs> it made her sad <laughs> but uh okay so so yeah you would watch an episode of unsolved mysteries maybe get four or five or six of these per episode 
they weren't super long and you also it was always fun to try to guess because sometimes you'd be watching the uh the the up the not the update but you'd be watching the story and you mm -hmm. notice that it was really fast edited like it seemed like everyone was cut off and you'd be like is that because an update is coming <laughs> and they need to make room for the update and <laughs> and a lot of times you'd be right so um i loved that show growing up also it was scary like the the theme song was creepy and it made you nervous and 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 sometimes the, and you just never knew it was like you know you might be like oh this story is gonna be where and then it'd be like it'd be like that's right the family was reunited after 35 years and now the amityville horror house and you'd be like no 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 <laughs> like, they would though they would do stuff like that mm -hmm. um so but so what's happened is for a few years now, they've teased bringing Unsolved Mysteries back. They did bring it back once uh, with a different host whose name I'm forgetting, who I thought was fine because Robert Stack had passed away. Yeah. Um, but I thought that the new host was fine. You know, the show okay. was, because was, the show was in essence what it always was. So uh, it's also really cool to watch the really old episodes because you can see like how it's all phone numbers and PO boxes. And then, like, in 96, oh. it becomes unsolved.com. You know, like, it, it, they, mm -hmm. they, cut, they get with the times, man. Cool. But, uh, so, Netflix announces they're bringing it back. Because people kept thinking, like, wow, they must be getting ready to bring it back. Because they, they did all that work updating all the episodes before they went on Pluto and Amazon Prime and da-da-da. So, Netflix says, like, we're, we're bringing back Unsolved Mysteries. And... I'm not going to say that it's a total flop. They only have six episodes out right now and they're calling that volume one. So supposedly they're going to be doing a lot more. Um, but the biggest problem is they're about 45 minutes to an hour long and it's one story. So it's just a long true crime documentary. Yeah. But in my opinion, not that good of one. It's like fine. I mean, like the thing they have in their pocket is that they have a high budget so they get to interview like everybody and they get to hear all the stories and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i watch like i subscribe to a couple of true crime youtubers who do a in my opinion a way better job of narrating what the story of like a crime is in an entertaining way there's no personality to having it be so dry for me yeah and also, at least two of the stories are strictly UFO related. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're really going to solve, like, where that seven minutes went. Right. That's what's going to happen. Because, <laughs> you know, at the end it says if you have any information, whatever. But there's, like, no focus on, like, maybe you could solve a mystery. They only do one story. Um, I don't think it fits with streaming super well. Um, as far, but, but then again, it, in a way it does, though, because streaming is, like, this is better than reruns. Because it means literally whenever somebody discovers the show, they watch it all. Right. So that, that way I, I stand corrected. I corrected myself. Thank you for, for allowing me to fix, figure myself out. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I watched a couple of them were pretty interesting. I mean, there were ones about like people disappearing and stuff like that. But overall, it was like, it just, it just felt like another true crime YouTube channel for me. One with less amusing, you know, characters and stuff. You were going to say something, I think, or you were just No, sighing. I was just sighing because I'm sad that it's not good. <laughs> it wasn't terrible, and, I, and, and on my Facebook and stuff, it is completely down the middle. Some people mm -hmm. really seem to love it, and other people not so much. Yeah. So, you know. I mean, I hope that, I hope that it, you know, get maybe, I, I'll probably, when, like, when they say, like, here's another five episodes, where I'll probably watch a couple of them and see. Because, you know, I like documentary television. I mean, I find it much more enjoyable to take in when I'm, like, in bites or when I'm working or when I'm doing something. Because I feel like that's easier to take in than following, like, a story arc. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I'd probably give it a shot. I'm not going to say it was totally rotten, but it didn't do what the original did. And for me, that, that is kind of a deal breaker. Yeah. Um, I just wish they kept the format. Yeah. You know? Also, I think they totally, I mean, like, why the hell couldn't they have just gotten, you know, like Nick Nolte? Hey, maybe you can help uh, solve a mystery. You know, or Gary Busey. That's who needs to host the new Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> Busey. <laughs> you know what? This mystery upsets me so much, I'm going to find it myself. Buchet. So, 
Um, so that's Unsolved Mysteries uh, on Netflix. I liked it. You know, I, I mean, I didn't love it. I thought that some of it was was all right. Um, you know what else I watched on Netflix? No. Was because we we are living in uh, lockdown days, so there is this is what we have. This is what life is. It's like oh, but the other thing I watched on Netflix, and then this thing I watched on Netflix, also toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> Man, what's that like? <laughs> Uh, I know, I know, I know. Um, but uh, I watched the Jeffrey Epstein uh, docu-series uh, oh, called yeah? Filthy Rich. Mm-hmm. I do recommend you watch it. Okay. Just because just you'll get a much better sense of like what that guy did. Oof. Um, he might they have records that he might have assaulted over 50 or 60 underage women wow and then maybe 50 or 60 more that were of age wow (laughs) and also it's fascinating because he's one of these people who became rich from strictly being a con man i mean i mean strictly um it appears allegedly in the I'm being very careful because I'm about to talk a bunch of shit about really rich people. Um, it is believed allegedly that one of the ways he got millions of dollars to invest in crooked hedge funds mm-hmm. was he was in a homosexual relationship with the guy who owned limited brands, the company that owns Victoria's secret and a bunch of other businesses. Okay. And like, it's funny. Cause like, everybody's like, Everybody's like, yeah, they were gay lovers, but Epstein in like, in like interviews and stuff, he's like, I was never his gay lover. And then the guy who's still around, he's like, he was never my gay lover. And then it's like, okay, um, you did send a private plane to pick him up like 45 times to come and see you. What? People can't be friends? <laughs> you also, without him working directly for your corporation, you let him handle millions of dollars for which you claim he stole 300 million and did not press charges. But you know, when you when you really care about someone and you don't want them to go to jail. If I stole three hundred million dollars from you, would you just like be like, buddy's my bud? Like I don't wanna be a jerk. How like, much money do I have? Um more than that. But like like do I have like seventy million? Seventy you're, you're probably a multi billionaire. <laughs> then maybe it's not that much. And I'm just like, eh, I don't need that anyway. I was just gonna like buy a, I don't know, another house. Another 20 houses, 20 yeah, mansions. The guy, the other but, thing is he, he's one of the few billionaires lives in Ohio. So like, oh. I mean, $20 million will get you like, oh, wow. A lot of houses. You know, a very, very beautiful estate. If you spend twenty, I mean, holy crap. Okay, I'm I'm not sure if I <laughs> if I'd press charges or not. I have to think about it. If you murdered someone, I'd I'd turn you in. But you know, wait, stealing. wait, wait, wait! <laughs> stealing, hold on, stealing your money is not the same as murdering someone. Number one. If I murdered someone, what if it was somewhat justifiable? What if it was a crime of passion? If I steal from you, I strictly intended to hurt you. Okay, but you you killed someone. Yeah, a bad person. You know, they have family too, and you just ruined a bunch of people's lives. I know it was an accident. (laughs) But, like, listen, you still put yourself in that situation, and... At some point, this is going to catch up to you. What? Man, I, I'm reassessing our friendship. I thought I'm that sorry. friendship, see, to me, stealing your money is more of a friendship breaker than murdering a person unrelated to you. Well, well, uh, I consider everyone my friend, and I don't know. Okay, everyone, read that as Michelle befriends all of the white nationalist organizations of America. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, and then like they're asked to comment and they're like we don't want her no no no, 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 no we're not you. her friends no no thank you no. <laughs> we don't want either of these people to talk about us no it, please, it will no. hurt our image yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn so I can't depend on the whole like best friend uh, friends will help you move but best friends will help you move a body uh I would never ask you 
to move a body of somebody that I killed. I just want to let you know, because that's how much I care about you, and I don't want you implicated in a murder. See, I thought for sure you were, you were going to be like, I would never ask you to help me move again. I know how bad that was the last <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, that was bad, though. That might have been worse than moving a body, but it has different implications. So. Well, I mean, it wasn't that bad helping you move. Um, it felt but, bad. <laughs> it felt bad. But, uh, no, um, uh, I can't believe you turned me in for murder. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, th- I you think you know someone. I, then- I guess I guess it like depends. I mean, if you like came to me and you were like, listen, I just killed a bunch of people because <laughs> I was it was a crime of passion and uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna flee. And maybe I wouldn't tell the cops where that I saw you. I like how you're expanding the <laughs> level of monster I would be. I'm saying, like, what if I killed someone? It could have been sort of an accident. It could have been something where it was like he attacked me and I punched him in the head, but, like, way too hard and he died or I didn't know he was a diabetic or something. And, and, and you go to, like, so if you came to me and you were like, I killed 27 people because I was just really upset, you know, you, you would... You, <laughs> I like how this just grows and grows and grows. To, see, in my imagination, it's like if I killed someone, it was probably an accident. Uh, maybe I was trying to defend myself and I mm-hmm. defended myself too well. Or maybe uh, a case of mistaken identity. Or, I mean, it's, my point is not cold-blooded murder. That's really what my point is. Okay, like, it's well, not like I went, Michelle, you got to help me. This guy at the grocery store was really rude to me. So I cased his house for five weeks and then I slit his throat. You know. <laughs> And you're like, oh my god, you poor dear, you poor dear. Well, okay, so if it was an accident or something happened, you know, we could we could discuss it. You also, know? what I mean, well, okay, this will be a better test of our friendship too. What if I come to you and I'm like, Michelle, a lot of people are saying a lot of things, but I did not kill that guy. Do you believe me? I I don't think that you'd kill someone. Um, but you probably also don't think that I'd kill someone. Oh, why? I don't know. Oh, okay. Then never mind. Well, level two, though, I'm covered in that person's blood. You have to explain that immediately. And I... I can't be like, I'll tell you everything once I get a shower. No, what if... No, because you're going to come in and kill me now. No, now we've advanced to that. I'm just just a drooling mad dog killer that kills everyone. Why are you covered? Okay, so... So, no, 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 no. You can come inside because you could have been there you know, trying to protect this person and someone else could have shot them and you're right in range and so you could be covered with their blood, you know? I, I, you're trying to save them and then that's when the cops came, so you ran. And I, yeah, no, you can come inside, come take a shower. Okay. 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 Whew, this was, that was getting a little rough. Sorry. I'm glad that we worked that out. 